Okay, our last video we created a new class named test and then created a new object, an instance of class test, we called my test. Well, let's inspect that instance. We'll just start over. Inspecting on a line of code will actually inspect the object that is returned from that line of code. In this case, an object of class test, which has no instance variables other than referring to itself. All right, so let's open our browser, find our package testing testing, and we're going to create a new message. We're going to call it initialize. Initialize is called whenever you create a new object. If you put an instance method, that is to say an ob a method associated with the object rather than the class, this initialize method will always be called when you create a new, a new object. Well, perhaps this object has a parent which also has an initialize. To make sure we get the proper definitions and so on from our parent, first we call super initialize. That calls our super class initialize. And now let's add a variable named first variable colon equals two. Notice that first variable is red. We haven't defined it anywhere. Now when we save, it wants our initials again. And now it says unknown variable. So we want it to be an instance variable, which means it's data associated with a given object. So we say declare instance. And in fact, it is now defined an instance variable named first variable. So if we check right now, let's minimize that we will see that there is now a first variable, but it is nil. Well, we can do two things. We can either start over from the beginning and create a new object from scratch, which we'll call the initialize code, which will set first variable equals to two, or we can actually do this. First variable colon equals two and do it. And in fact, from within our inspector, we have modified our live object, my test, and it now contains a, a two as the first variable. So let's, let's try that again with a new way of doing things. Let's create second variable equals three. And when we do it with this code, it says unknown variable. Well, we want another instance variable. So in fact, we'll declare an instance variable from within our inspector window. And sure enough, after a little bit of percolating through the system, we now have a second variable, instance variable, that has a three associated with it, that is called a three. Send this boot to the back. Let's open our system browser. And sure enough, when we refresh, we'll see we have a first variable and a second variable defined as instant variable names. So let's see if we can do something. We have an initialized routine, which is as yet unclassified. So how about we try categorized all uncategorized? Let's see what happens. Well, it doesn't know what a first message is, but it does know that an initialize variable belongs in the initialize release method. So let's create a new category. This is a category, not a method. Initialize release is a category. It's just a way of organizing methods within a class. So let's create a new category, new category, 
and call it first message category. And now we can simply drag first message, first message colon, and the rest of them into the first message category. And now there's no such thing as an uncategorized message, so that goes away. And we see that first messages are in the first message category, and initialize is in the initialize release category. So, we now have two instance variables, one named first variable and one named second variable. So let's, in our initialize routine, so we don't have to go through the rigmarole again, let's go first, uh, second, second variable. Notice it's already defined, so it is in red, colon equals three. And now, whenever we create a new object of type test, class test, it will automatically put these in. So let's see what happens. We save it. No objections. Let's close that. We're going to create an entirely new object. Let's call it test1 just so you can see that there's a difference between them. My test1 equals new object. And when we do it or inspect it, we see that the initialize routine was indeed done and we initialized first variable to 2 and second variable to 3 just as we wanted. Now going back to our browser again we notice that there's no way of accessing these variables. If you have an instance variable you can always access it from within the object that it is associated with. However, if you want to access it from code outside the object, there's no way to do it. If we try to say my test one, and then what we, we say uh, first first variable first variable equals 3, it says it's an unknown selector. That is to say, we, it doesn't know what that particular message is. There's no message named first variable, and there's no way from external code to set or gain access to first variable. So instead, let's go back here and say I would believe it's under the class more add instance variable accessors. And in fact, when we do that, we see we have an accessor for first variable that will simply return this little arrow there means return the value. In other words, when we see first variable here all by itself, we get the value of first variable. The second one, first variable colon, accepts an object that is passed in and sets it to the valuable value, or sets the value of first variable to object. So let's do this now. First variable colon five, four, and do it. And in fact, if we inspect my test, we will see that first variable now has a 4. On the other hand, if we inspect my test instead of my test 1, we will see first variable is still 2. So, you can see now that we have accessors to manipulate the variables, the instance variables that we already created. So it's getting cluttered again. So let's let's go up here, right click on the name of the class, create instance variable accessors. Or rather, no, we want it in the category. So we've go and categorize all in category. 
So accessing is a new category that the Smalltalk knows about and will create automatically, and it will create accessor, or it will create a category and put all our accessor methods into that category. So now we have three categories. First message category, initialize release category, accessing category, or we can look at all of them at once. Notice they're in alphabetical order. So that's instance variables.